So all my goals from college, they were destroyed. I had to go back to Iceland, square one, mm -hmm. where everything started. You're the first player in Champions League history. Never even thought I would uh, play at this level. And the Iceman from Iceland. Also mid-range, Fredrickson mid-range takes it. You could feel it, it was more than a basketball game. What are some of the biggest sacrifices you've made along the way? Sometimes I feel like I'm letting him down for not being able to be there for him. If you could go back in time and change something, I would definitely want to relive that moment with different feelings. Okay, so I feel like in order to get to know someone, first of all, you have to understand where he came from, how he grew up, what his earlier years were like. So like, what was your childhood like and how did that form and shape who you are today? Um, I came from, a, I come from a small town in Iceland and it's, the population is 10 or 15,000 and mostly involves around sports. And I'm mainly from like a sports family, like my whole family is just involved in sports. My my father was a player, he was a coach. My mom used to play soccer and basketball, so okay. both of them really were into sports. So when I was growing up, I was I was always going with my dad to practices. I was following him everywhere. You know, we were he was here the other day and we were talking about like I, I went to probably eighty percent of his practices during three year span from like eleven to fourteen years old. So I, I was like a part of the team during those years. So I had a small circle of friends and what I remember, like when people are trying to relate to me with TV shows or movies or something, I haven't seen anything. It was just always, I was hanging out with my, my parents and their friends. And then I had a small circle of my friends where they were only into sports. So when I was growing up, I was very shy, not very outgoing. Um, I was like a late bloomer, so I was always very small and, and uh, yeah, like not as outgoing as I am today, I would say. So mm -hmm. it was just a, um, for, for me, like a, a normal childhood, you know, so everything was just about basketball and, and football. The, the, football. That, you uh, played football? I played until I was 15 years old. From what age to what age you played football? I, I was probably my first sport. I started from five years old to 15. Okay. So I guess. What right. position did you play? I'm a left footed. So uh, I played like left wing and uh, and a striker too. So. Okay. How how come you decided to uh, go to basketball starting off in soccer? Like, did your dad play a big role as being a basketball coach? Did he like pressure you into that in a way or did he? He was actually upset with me that I, I chose basketball that early because I had a lot of potential as a football player, uh, he felt like, but I think I was always more interested in basketball because I was always following him. He was coaching basketball and uh, my town was more involved in basketball. So I think, I guess that was the reason, but sometimes I think back, maybe I should have picked mm -hmm. football, but you, you never know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm doing okay in basketball now, so. Absolutely. How did you decide to go to Long Island University? Like, did you go on a visit? Uh, yeah, um, I was doing really well in the league. My last year in Iceland, I was, I think I was 17 or 18 when I was average like 21 points and seven assists. So I was getting a little exposure from some college teams. And uh, there was a college, I think it was James Madison University, a college from there came and uh, visited me in Iceland and then he ended up not having a scholarship for me so he told his friend at LAU Brooklyn and then they, the week after they offered me to come on a visit so I went to Brooklyn. What was that visit like? First time in the it's, States, right? It's yeah, it's, it's, it's so, wow, I'm such a naive Icelandic guy, like never been to New York, I don't know anything about college. They take me to Madison Square Garden, uh, Barclays Center where Oh, wow. Brooklyn Place, um, then to Times Square, showed me all the great restaurants and 
and they basically showed me nothing about the school and <laughs> me being 18 alone on a visit I should have took a parent with me just to have a little different vision and my English was not so good so I couldn't communicate well with them so I went there and they were showing me all these things and I was just amazed because I was just coming from a small small town yeah, yeah. the facilities weren't great and coming into all this and and then I, I play a pick up there I do really good and the coach asked me so so how was it I said it was good and he said okay let's go celebrate we have a new player so he okay. came back yeah yeah took advantage of my English and me being alone and just too shy and like I was still at that time very shy so he kind of pushed me into committing and I did and I went there for one year nice how was the language barrier you just said you didn't speak very well on the visit so you go to the states you barely know English that must have been a challenge ah, that was definitely a challenge and I remember because in America they they uh their English is yeah. They focus a lot on public speaking. And okay. My my first semester, I go into a class and and um, here I am standing in front of twenty people and I've never I, I know I could read English but I couldn't really speak it. Oh. My so God. I was standing in front just shaking. I couldn't do the assignments. I was doing terrible. But uh, it really pushed me out of the comfort zone. And Absolutely. I really had to come out of my shell and to to grow. And it was a uh, that was like the biggest learning point I, I had in during those four years. That's tough, man. Yeah. That's really tough. At what point do you start thinking about professional basketball and the reality of that you might be able to play professionally and make money off of doing what you love? Uh, that was like my that was my main goal before going into college. I wanted to use college to get exposure, and use that as a transition to go pro. And uh, so I did all these four years in college, and finally after college, it's it's strange how it works. You're always during these years, you're always focusing on the next step. Mm -hmm. Like these four years, I was always waiting to get out of college, and you forget to enjoy it, oh, yeah. what you're doing during the time. So that's something. When I look back, I I regret a little bit, mm -hmm. but I was looking forward to making some money, going professional. So I signed my first deal in uh, Pro B in France, and uh, the transition was just huge for me. I was I wasn't I don't think I was ready for that to be the main point guard for a for a solid team in the second division in France. And after two three months, they said, "Okay, that's enough. We need a more more experienced point guard." And um, so they let me go. So so all my Goals from college, they were destroyed. I had to go back to Iceland, square one, mm -hmm. where everything started. And so I was like, no, I'm, I'll probably never go back to Europe. And it was, I kind of was scratching that off my list. I wasn't even going to go back. Okay. Wow. So like, how did you deal with that? So like, you think you've kind of like, um, gave up on the dream of playing like European basketball? Yeah, a, a kind of. Like I, I wasn't really planning on going Anyway, because I thought if I can't make it in second division in France and I go back all the way to square one and I'm 23 or 24 during the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So I was just being re realistic to myself, like, it's not going to happen. So, And then an opportunity came to go to Sweden mm -hmm. and me and my girl, we said, okay, let's try one more time just to to get the experience. You know, my goal wasn't even to make it higher in Sweden. T and, tell me what happened there. But I just I went straight into a great position or a great situation. Um, I was on a great team. We were we were champions that year. It was it was the COVID year. We mm -hmm. had to cancel the season, but we were in the first place. So I doesn't really count as champions. But I played really well that year, and I was selected guard of the year, and that gave me a little more exposure because I would say Sweden is a little higher ranked than Iceland. Mm -hmm. And so we said, oh, let's do one more year, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, and then you where'd you go after yeah. that? So I went to uh, a, a small team in Lithuania mm -hmm. called Chole and... Uh, Lithuania is big on basketball, man. And it's, I was shocked. I, I had I had no idea about Lithuanian basketball. Uh, like, 
the league there. I didn't even, I never heard of this team. Okay. So I went there with no expectations. And that was also a big cultural shock for me to go from just Sweden, which is very similar to Iceland, the culture and everything, to mm -hmm. kind of country that it's like Eastern European culture, like coach speaking Russian and Lithuanian, barely spoke English, Man. very old school. So you you kind of went through what you went through in college when you weren't really understanding the language. Yeah. So he was he was speaking just in Lithuanian all the time, and we just had to figure it out. And I think we lost the first 11 games of the season. So again, I thought, mm -hmm. this is over. We'll, we'll just go back home. But we signed some very experienced players, and they guided me in the right direction and helped me a lot. I mean, in the end, I played really well in, in that league too, so I was able to establish myself in another league. So mm -hmm. I was really helpful. Is that where you got the MVP of the season? Is yeah. that is, is that year? Yeah. And assist leader again? Yeah. Nice. So I was able to play really high tempo, quick basketball, which was really beneficial for me because being unexperienced and not knowing a lot about tactics or anything during that time, I it was really helpful and it was help it helped me to get on the on the map. Nice. So where's where's your next stop? Where do you go after that? So I go from there to Belgium, Belgium. Which is not a big basketball country. I remember a lot of people were questioning that move going from Lithuania, especially Lithuanians, they thought like, oh, Lithuania is way better than Belgian basketball, so why is he going there if he's the MVP of the league there? But that was kind of my only opportunity mm -hmm. I had after that, which is understandable. I'm I'm still just an experienced small guy from Iceland not with a big resume, so mm -hmm. at least somebody was able to give me a chance, and I played there on Antwerp Giants, and I, I looked at their former rosters and I saw a lot of guys that took a big jump f from that team. Uh, Speedy mm -hmm. Smith from who was okay. at Hapo Jerusalem, Paris mm -hmm. Leagues, New League now. So oh, wow. the former Pointers before me were both in 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 a high level. So I said, why not? Let's use this as the next jump. So I started to believe a little more that I could make the next step. Mm -hmm. and I, I I had a big role on the team and I, I did pretty good during that season too. So Where's your next stop after that? I was bought out during the season to an Italian club, Tortona. Tortona. Which is in, um, they were playing their first season in the Italian league. They had a huge ambition and uh, they're playing in Champions League now. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a great roster with, with good budget. So I came in there as the, the seventh foreigner. Um, I was told I was going to be the point guard of the team because I was kind of throwing away my season to get in a bigger opportunity. Mm -hmm. But then I come there and they told me the point guard was hurt and he's all fine when I come there. And he tell, the coach introduced me in the first practice and tells me uh, I'm just an addition to the team and I'm I'm going to help them to to like be an extra player in practice. And uh, so I was kind of shocked to yeah. leave in a big role for being a practice player, basically. And there was only a couple of more games left of the season. So I was never in any of their ideas. So mm -hmm. I think I played one or two games, just a couple of minutes and just to rest some guys. And then I didn't do much after that. It was two or three months that just went to waste basically but I had a contract for the season after there but they didn't want to extend that so okay so that's where I ended up at the, in uh Rita's the year after going back to Lithuania right right you had another great season there yeah I would say a solid season and my my first year in Champions League that was good experience for me never even thought I would uh, play at this level and for a big club like that so mm -hmm. and we were able to go to five games against EuroLeague team in uh, in playoffs in Lithuanian League. So we had a really strong team and it was really fun and great to be part of this uh, like nice. good team. Now you're in Greece. 
obviously, playing for Balk. Um, what are some of the differences with uh, Greece and Iceland? There's a lot of differences, I would say. Um, everything, we, we have so much space in Iceland. Everything is, I would say, modern. And uh, we're really, I was spoiled in Iceland. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it's okay. very high quality of living. Mm -hmm. So I would say here is, things are like, very crammed together, a lot of people. Very, very crowded, smaller apartments, smaller cars, more traffic. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just, I would say, so many differences. The weather, um, just the, the culture here, the, the food. So I, I, could, I could go on and on about mm -hmm. the differences, okay. but let's talk about the food a little bit. Like, what are some of the main differences? I would say there's more quality in fresh fruits, vegetables, mm -hmm. and just the, the traditional food here is amazing. I feel like, and, and uh, just, I would say just uh, the amount of vegetables and fruits I've eaten here, it's probably more than I've done in, in a year in Iceland because oh, okay. we got to import all these right. stuff to Iceland. Because of the weather there and the sun cycle. Yeah, all that stuff. So, so we don't have the resources to, to grow that. So okay. that's kind of like the, the biggest difference. But then I've been, like here, I've been eating more Western culture food and I cook a lot at home, so. Mm. Okay. But going to a restaurant I, I can, and it's grocery stores, I see a lot of different, different options and it's, I really, I really like the food here. Nice, nice. Uh, how was your experience with the team till now? Like all of the experience, like Balk, Saloniki, everything like that. Um, my experience with the the team here has been great so far. Um, we started off, we came in early, what was it, middle of August, yeah, and 15. we had a, had a really tough preseason, probably the hardest stuff I've had since I've, I've been to Europe. So that was another different thing I, I experienced. Um, and just the, the way we practiced, um, the length of practices. But we, I'm really fortunate with my, my teammates. It's, it's always fun to come to practice. It's never this feeling like, oh, I gotta go to practice. Because mm -hmm. when you walk into the locker room, it's also always somebody smiling and it's, the mood is always Positive. pretty positive and light so I love stepping into that kind of environment and that makes it fun so that's the most important thing for me to I get to go to work and I get to play basketball which I love I enjoy with a good company of guys and and it's fun so yeah so it's been a lot of ups and downs like like it is everywhere but what makes it good is that you have always some guys that are going through with you and they stand next to you and they're doing it we're, we're doing it together and that makes it a lot easier i agree 100 percent. i want you to tell me about the the rivalry game the uh, pao Caris. what was that experience like for you uh it was kind of like a dream come true i have to say i remember when i was like 10 or 11 years old scrolling through youtube and uh, i've seen these old clips of the tradition throwing toilet papers on the court Mm. Like, I was like, wow, what, what if I could play in one of these games or wow. even go to, go to, go to watch this game once in my life, it would be, it would be awesome. And being able to be a part of one of these games was just kind of like a dream come true. And, and, uh, it was that special that my dad, he flew from Iceland to, to come here just to watch this game. Cause he didn't want to miss out on that mm. experience too. And it was. Wow. It was it was unreal. Just just the atmosphere in the arena, and it was you could feel it. It was more than basketball game. Absolutely, absolutely. That's definitely the highlight of my career too. I've played in a few of these games, and every year I wait for. I can't wait. Yeah, can't wait to play in these games. I want to talk about the importance of keeping the right people around you throughout your career. I think that is really really important to to be able to have the right people around you to and not feed you some crap or some ideas in your head that can take you off the off the rails and and I also believe it's important to have people that keeps you humble mm. so so you never go too high but also 
there for you when you're not doing well exactly. to to lift you up to to keep you kind of in a consistent straight line mm -hmm. because I believe for at least for me that's the best way best way to to live never too high never too low it's just because you know you have your best friends your your role models your parents you they can kind of guide you in the right direction and and help you through difficult and and good times mm -hmm. so i think it, that that is really important to to have that's powerful yeah. for sure what advice if you could go back in time what advice would you give your younger self when you're starting out in your career uh to train the the mental part as well as you train your physical part because i feel like i always focused so much on the physical part because i was not the tallest or the strongest so i only was going every day training trying to be the best version of myself but when i what i learned along the way that the mentality the self-confidence just your ideas in your head are just as more just as important as the the physical part and especially for i think it's in sports and just in other jobs too it's your mentality can take you just as far as your physical part can take so mm -hmm. i wish i would have trained and gained more knowledge on the, on the mental part earlier mm. so true bro so true what are some of the biggest sacrifices you've made along the way um, or, or still making the the biggest sacrifices are of course to be away from my my family you know i'm fortunate to have my girl and my son to to follow me everywhere i go but they go they come here for a couple of months and then they're at home for a couple of months so not being able to see my son sometimes for two three months mm. i would say that's a big sacrifice and mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like I'm letting him down for not being able to be there for him, but I know I'm doing it for for the better. So, so hopefully I can I can make it up to him later on and and to gain more knowledge along the way, so I can feed him those informations and and help him the the best way I can. Mm. Wow, I can I can totally relate to you yeah. on that, bro. What have the emotions been like along the way? Talk to me a little about the up and downs. I can go from the emotions can go from being the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lowest. One day it's it's great, and another day you feel like okay, this is it. I'm about to go home. I need to start working in a find a regular job or get get more education. And just play in Iceland. So that's why I talk about the consistency of mm. never being too high and, and never, never never too low so I try to not overthink basketball that's why it's so good to have my family here because my my biggest concern now is what I can do to make my son happy instead of constantly focusing on 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 my job so yeah so the game against Galata you're the first player in Champions League's history to have a triple double in an away game. Uh, what happened that game? You just you you were everywhere. Couldn't miss. Yeah, I mean, I think it was in, like during the game. I didn't think it was so special because I wasn't scoring a lot. I think I had 19 points that game. But sometimes you're just able to impact the game in in other ways, and I was able to. I think they were really focused on boxing out our big guy, uh, Jamoni Magnis. He was he was a big threat for them uh, on the on the rebound. So I saw always two guys go on him, and uh, and my the player I was guarding was always going back on defense as a safety. Mm. So I saw an opportunity for, for some rebounds. So I just got in there and grabbed all the all the balls that were closer to the floor because. I didn't have a chance mm -hmm. above the rim, so I was able to help team that way. And then we were we pushed the pace a little that game, and mm. we had a lot of transition baskets, and a lot of guys were making shots, and 
when that happens, it's it's easier for the point guards to collect assists. Assist, so, yeah. so it was not because I was so amazing. It was just the fact that they were taking stuff away from our big guy that I was able to help him out do, or he was able to help me take those rebounds by having two guys on him and and uh, we were able to just gain some confidence throughout the game when we played fast everyone is in is in rhythm everyone has has a good feeling for the ball so you make more good plays i would say right and that's what happened we were just in the moment and mm -hmm. nobody expected us to win i think and uh in the end we were up 10 12 points and and i had no idea i had triple double after the game it wasn't like I don't think it's a feeling like, oh, I definitely had a triple-double. Yeah, it was yeah. just somebody told me you had 11 rebounds, and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. You were just playing in it. Yeah, I was just playing. At the end of the game, you're like, wow. Yeah. At the end of every podcast, our previous guest leaves a question for the next guest without knowing who he is. And the question the previous guest left for you is, if you could go back in time and change something, what would it be and why? I would say that what's on top of my mind is a, a game I played last, no, was it, it was this year in Georgia with the national team. Uh, we had to game, win, win the game by four to make it to a World Cup. And there are 10 seconds left when we come down the court, up three, and uh, my teammate drives it in and kicks it out to me for a wide open three. And the ball does not go in and Georgia goes to World Cup and not Iceland, which would have been historic for such a small country to go to the World Cup. And mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely want to relive that moment with different feelings because yeah. it was devastating to to miss that shot. So I would definitely go back in time, and go shoot back again. in time, and, and and shoot it again. I would never. I'm not afraid of the moment, and and uh, I would definitely do it again. Take the shot. And I would I would make it this time. That's what's up. El, thanks a lot, man. This has been a blast. Thank you.